next guest has been one of the stabilizing forces over the first five seasons of NBC TV's six. Chips, Six Seasons, a okay. show that uh, through accidents, injuries, and enlarged egos, of which he is not one, has maintained a revolving door of players. And here is Robert Pine. You are the, the guy that's been there the longest. You've seen well, no, Eric go. Estrada has been there as long as I have. Well, he's, had, he's taken little um, respites, but... Yeah. Uh, You've been there, though. Yeah. Are you going to be back next season? I don't know. At the moment, we are uh, sweating out a pickup, whether we are back for a seventh season. That's got to be an irritating thing to have to go through. Uh, do you finish the last show, and then what do you do? You go on hiatus and just <laughs> wait around? Well, not really. I feel like any anything from now is um, gravy. If you've been lucky enough to be on a series uh, that's lasted six years, you've, uh, you've done very well. How do you keep your sanity on a show that that goes through so many changes like Chips has? Oh, well, I think that's been blown out of proportion, what people read in the papers and whatever. Uh, I've been in the business now almost 20 years, and uh, you see a lot going on, and uh, when things get a little rough, you pull back and... Uh, you just don't get involved in those sort of things that happen. Do you get a chance to do anything else other than the show? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I've been directing some chips. Uh, one uh, of my efforts, I think, um, is going to be on the second week in May. Is it different? Different perspective? Oh, much different. Yeah. Do you have to treat all your all your peers differently because you're the director? Well, you just do treat them differently. You have to to get the, get the work done because you know what the interesting thing for me was one time uh, as a director watching the actors come to work at about 10 o'clock and sort of some of the actors and sort of waltz in with this great attitude and they're, they're laughing and having a good time and you're sweating whether you're going to get the work done because the pace on a TV show is just yeah. incredible. I, it just looked so different to me. I mean, I saw myself doing it, and it would only been a couple of days since I'd done exactly that well, thing. Walked in at ten with this. Did they take you seriously? And what did you that have difficulty? Hard, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, they did. I tell you, the, the nicest thing, the nicest way to direct is uh, being an actor on a television series where you've been on it for quite some time, because everybody is pulling to make it happen sure. for you. They just will not let it fail for Great. you. It's almost That's a fail-safe uh, situation to be in, which is very So you get a lot of support from the from Oh, the absolutely. Cast, even though you switch roles on them. Absolutely. They really are very, very Do you nice. find yourself, though, when you get back and just being in front of the camera as an actor and somebody else is directing, that you suddenly nudge the guy next to you and say, well, I would have done it the other way. <laughs> well, I try to keep that inside and not vocalize that. You but uh, cut. <laughs> <laughs> Forgetting. Oops. So I, that's one of the things that was hard to do when you start to direct is to yell cut. All of a sudden it's going and somebody says, yell cut, will you? Oh, oh, a cut. Right. Or to say action. Motorcycle. Can I say something about Robert Pine? Yeah, sure. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what people know about him because uh, I think people are associated him with chips and we were talking about that identification, but... Uh, um, he's a wonderful actor. He auditioned for On Golden Pond and oh, really? came within a whisper of getting it. And the only reason he didn't was because we wanted someone older. And, and he, he is older I'm now, but so he wasn't young, then. Man. But um, uh, he's a wonderful, versatile, funny actor. And, oh, uh, isn't that nice? What was the uh, the role? Captain it was Hepburns. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, it was I did Tootsie before. <laughs> huh, a little boy. Uh, no, we were uh, we did it at the theater down here, and it's the role that Dabney Coleman played in the movie. And very and, well uh, he played it. But we did it with Charlie Durning and Julie Harris here, and then. Um, it's funny because I used to be an actor too, and uh, I was suddenly seeing actors from across the uh, the other side of the table, and uh, different my heart goes out to yeah. them. All of a sudden, I have a different face. Especially the auditions. Yeah. That's got to be the worst. Well, I had to read actors for my uh, thing, and it's were very difficult. Were you any more gentle than directors were on you? Oh, yes. I yeah. mean, I gave everybody, uh, you chance. know, they could, yeah, could try again, and if I saw any nervousness, I'd let them try it again. <laughs> the terrible thing was, I, one, I heard this story afterwards from somebody who knew one of the actors who came in and didn't know that this person uh, knew me. And uh, the guy said, well, you know, he quit acting after he'd come in on the interview for me. Isn't that terrible? He quit acting after he... He quit acting, this is what I Why? Because he said, I came in and he said, the director, he said, uh, told me I didn't have enough energy and wanted me to pick it up. And he said, if I thought if I couldn't get a job on chips, I'd quit. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. Um, I felt terrible. And I wasn't saying that as a... Um, 
you know, is a, is a criticism. It's the way it was him. He she played it at a, at a different uh, level than I wanted. He just wasn't particularly right for the part. But Words are deadly sometimes, aren't they? Oh, they sure are if you don't pick the right <laughs> <That's> ones. <right. laughs> now, you've been doing it six years. Yeah. You ever get bored with the same role week after week, day after day? Sure. I mean, I think any actor that would say they didn't get bored is uh, is not telling the truth. Um, you know, you've done it for this long, but the the way it makes it palatable, they pay you enough money down the road that you'd be I'd be foolish to want to leave. I mean, it's going to end on its own accord soon enough. So, um, and I'm happy to do it. It's been very kind to me, and uh, and of course, you know, Chips uh, is one of those successful shows in syndication. Indeed it is. Which will be around a long time. So next I time you audition so. for Ernie, you know, you can, if you don't get you it, well... Ernie will be auditioning for... Yeah. <laughs> not if you call me Ernie, though. No, so. that's right. Ernest. Ernest. Sorry. Right. <laughs> okay. I'm going to start calling you Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> Point taken. By the way, I want to uh, thank Bedfellows of Studio City that loaned us the large bed that we used. And we were disappointed uh, that we went on. Yes, I was kind of bed. hoping all well, four you of us. We only did that with no, with the, the two girls. Uh, we, <laughs> <laughs> we, we got some things figured out here. Tomorrow's guest, the star of General Hospital, Tony Geary, Kevin McCarthy from the new series, Amanda's comedian and ventriloquist, Jay Johnson, two of the authors from assumed to be a best-selling book entitled Lotus Land and our resident stargazer, Joyce Gilson. See you then, and thanks for being with us.